It was to be the biggest foreign investment in Germany's post-war history. Now US tech giant Intel has put plans for a giant chip factory in the eastern city of Magdeburg on hold. The 30 billion euro project would have created 3,000 jobs and provided a major boost to a region that's traditionally lagged behind the rest of the country. To talk more about this, I'm joined now by Professor Marcel Thum, Director of the Dresden branch of the IFO Economic Research Institute. Great to talk to you, Professor Thum. Now, we knew Intel had been struggling, but how surprised were you to hear that Magdeburg was to fall victim to its cost cutting? Yeah, it was certainly a big surprise. Uh, even so, the uh, the problems of Intel were well known, and it was uh, pretty clear that some projects uh, would be put on hold. So that it's Magdeburg, that's a bit of a surprise, but that uh, some cost cutting was necessary on Intel's side, that's not a big surprise. Why do you think they chose Magdeburg as the focus of this, these cuts, though? Well, it's, it's one of the projects that is not already uh, on its way. Uh, it's much easier if you do not have to lay off people. People haven't been hired, at least not on a big scale. Uh, and so that was probably one of the the easiest way to save costs in the next few years, and on a very in a very short period also. Other, other projects might take much longer until they become cost effective. This uh, Magdeburg chip plant was to be part of a big investment drive in the former East Germany, a region that's been hopefully dubbed the Silicon Saxony. Describe to me just what Intel's decision means for the people of this region. Yeah, for the, for the region, it's certainly uh, bad news for uh, two reasons. Uh, the first reason is uh, that this investment promised uh, new and fairly well-paid jobs. And as you know, Eastern Germany is still lagging behind in, in terms of, of wages compared to Western Germany. And so this investment would have been uh, at least one element in this uh, convergence process. And the second reason is that it creates uncertainty. So we do not know what will happen in two years. And now everything probably stopped, Every all the planning has stopped. and. But you can't make alternative plans because maybe in two years you still need this area for the plant. Maybe you don't need it. Um, so it creates uncertainty and that's certainly bad for uh, investments in this region. So yeah, you're in a kind of extended limbo, aren't you? Now we reached out to Intel and they pointed us to an email that CEO Pat Gelsinger had written to staff. It includes the lines we recently increased our capacity in Europe through our new fabs in Ireland, which will remain our lead European hub for the foreseeable future. Now, it went on to explain that projects in Poland and Germany would be put on hold for around two years, depending on market demand. How would you interpret the decision to prioritise the small country of Ireland over Germany and Poland? Is this a tax-based decision? I don't think it's... Um, it depends on some kind of qualities of the area. That's probably not the reason. I guess um, Intel has already been present in, in Ireland. Uh, it's probably much easier to be there because of, of the language. Uh, that has always been an advantage of Ireland. I don't think it's a decision against Germany or against Poland. It's uh, just a decision that this was the most, basically the most flexible project. You mentioned the workers there. Did Magdeburg have the people um, to, to supply the, this demand in the factory or were they hoping to bring in a lot of talent from abroad? Uh, that's a very good point. Um, so unemployment in Eastern Germany uh, has decreased enormously when you compare it to, say, 20 years ago, 2000, 2005. Uh, so the, the unemployment isn't much much bigger uh, compared to regions in West Germany. So that's not the main reason. But what we probably would have seen is that people move from other places to Magdeburg. So it would bring in new, mostly skilled uh, labor into the region. And it would allow people in the region to move from their current uh, company to a new company, to, to Intel, that probably pays better. And that's that's one of the main mechanisms how wages in a region are driven up, that people move from one job to a better paid job. And that won't happen now. So 
uh, for uh, the wage development in the region, it's, it's certainly bad news. Now, there could potentially be a slight silver lining to this story, and that is because the German government has committed to 10 billion euros in subsidies to this project, money that could now be used to fill the large hole in its budget. There seem to be differing views within the government, though, about whether the funds can actually be reallocated. Can you explain why the idea of this is so complicated? So, so first of all, uh, it's, it's probably good news for the for the public budget because Germany has promised uh, around uh, 10 billion euros of subsidies, and uh, many economists have warned that this is probably not the best way to develop an economy, just by paying huge subsidies to a, a small number of big players, rather than developing the economy in, in a more broader scope. And so, the, the good news is that there's money available, especially in times when the budget is very tight and there are uh, big conflicts over how to, uh, to, to close this gap in the budget. And there are sub sub simply certain interests. So the finance minister uh, wants to reduce the, the budget deficit and uh, the, the minister for the economy wants uh, to develop his projects further. So he wants that this money is used for climate related project. So that's just a conflict within the government. And well, they have to discuss that. Now, Germany's economy minister, Robert Habeck, says the Intel setback won't change the government's plans to build up chip production in Europe. Your colleague, Clemens Fuss, the head of the IFO Research Institute, had been critical of the government providing such generous subsidies to Intel. If subsidies are not the answer, what should the government be doing to attract chip producers? I'm not even <clears throat> sure that it's a good idea to attract uh, chip producers specifically. Um, I think it's often neglected in this debate that the semiconductor industry uh, needs an enormous supply chain. So just having a semiconductor fab here uh, in Germany doesn't mean that we're more independent in case of a crisis, say in case of a conflict with China. So we. We would still need many inputs to produce uh, the semiconductors. Even when they are produced here, this is not the final product. You need others in this value chain to basically refine the product, to make it a, a final product. And then it's not even clear, even if the factory is here, whether these chips are really used within Europe. So I think there are many uncertainties uh, associated with attracting these factories. They're extremely expensive and it's not clear uh, that we become more kind of self-sufficient in terms of uh, future technologies. All right, Professor Masal Thum from the IFO Economic Research Institute, thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye.